Hello and welcome. In this short video we're going to talk about the maxillary division of the trigeminal nerve. Remembering that that is the second division of the trigeminal nerve. We have previously talked about the mandibular division which is the third and for now we're not going to talk about the first division which is the ophthalmic. We're going to leave that for someone else to do. Now getting back to the maxillary division of the trigeminal nerve it's, it's a purely sensory nerve. And like we've learned elsewhere it is general somatic oops daisy try again somatic sensation and that means that it covers two parts of the sensory system it covers normal pain temperature and touch pain temperature and touch sensation and it also has as part of it proprioception and proprioception is the system that allows you to know where your muscles are or where your body is in space so for example if you close your eyes and then try to touch the tip of your nose with a finger it is the proprioceptive system that allows you to do that to know where the tip of your nose is in three-dimensional space so the trigeminal nerve the maxillary division of trigeminal nerve is general somatic sensation proprioception and pain temperature and touch it also is responsible for supplying the middle third of your face the middle third and uh, it is sensory to this middle third and if you think of the key structures in the middle third of the face we can think of the maxilla bone we can think of the nasal cavity including the septum we can think of the upper teeth we can think of the palate we can think of the upper lip we can think of the gingiva of the upper teeth the gingiva and obviously all of the skin of the middle third of the face and the last thing we can think of also is there there is a lot of glands in the middle third salivary glands nasal uh, muco mucus glands and things now your immediate reaction should be oh but those glands need a parasympathetic supply And you're absolutely correct the glands need a parasympathetic supply a supply that controls the amount of uh, liquid that they produce and because the fifth cranial nerve doesn't have any parasympathetic output remember in output terms that would be general visceral motor because the fifth nerve doesn't have any of that it actually these it actually takes some from the seventh nerve so we will see as we go through this the approach to the maxillary division of the trigeminal nerve stealing a little bit of the seventh nerve to supply the glandular tissue so this makes the maxillary division of trigeminal nerve a very interesting nerve 
It's fundamentally a sensory nerve to the middle third of the face, and it has a little bit of stealing of parasympathetic, general visceral motor, to supply the glands. So let's now have a look at the uh, basic beginnings of the maxillary division of the trigeminal nerve. And here we have the middle cranial fossa from the inside, from the brain's eye view. And just to remind us of a few key structures, here is the superior orbital fissure. Here is foramen ovale. Here is foramen lacerum that we're going to talk about in a little while. Here is the optic canals where the optic nerve going out to the eyes is. And here is the pituitary fossa where the pituitary gland would sit. Now the key structure for today we need to think about is firstly the trigeminal nerve because the maxillary division of trigeminal nerve is the middle division. And these divisions of the trigeminal nerve start their journey from the trigeminal ganglion that sits just here. Trigeminal ganglion. And that trigeminal ganglion, remember, is just like any other dorsal root ganglion of a spinal nerve. It has the cell bodies in it of the sensory fibres. Now I'm not going to, well I will, I'll just draw on quickly. The mandibular division runs out through foramen ovale. But the important division for today is the maxillary division that runs out through this foramen here. And this foramen here is called foramen rotundum. And foramen rotundum is called foramen rotundum because it is a round foramen and it heads out right there through the base of the skull. Now interestingly, foramen rotundum actually doesn't head out through the base of the skull to to the outside of the skull. You can't see it if you turn the skull over on its side. Um, we'll, sh we'll have a look at where it actually runs to. Foramen rotundum actually makes a canal. It's quite long. They're about or oh, three or four millimeters long and it runs out sort of down towards the back of the orbit and we'll have a look in the next picture about where it runs to. So this is the pathway of the maxillary division of the trigeminal nerve in the intracranial portion. We'll now move on and have a look at the maxillary division of trigeminal nerve once it exits on the other side of foramen rotundum. But before we do that, let's just remind ourselves that we have to add this little bit of autonomic nerves. And I'll just remind you that the seventh nerve has a little piece of it that comes out, runs along here, and drops out through foramen lacerum. So this is going to be the little bit of parasympathetic that in the end will join up with the fifth nerve. And this is called the greater superficial petrosal nerve. And let's just be clear, it's just a little piece of the seventh cranial nerve that is going to join up with the maxillary division of five on the other side of the skull here. So let's move on now and talk about the other side of foramen rotundum and what happens there. So let's just for one minute have a look at the outside of the skull and uh, 
uh, understand our orientation here. Now, just to remind you, this is looking at the base of the skull. Here is the uh, the, the mandible. Um, here is the nasal septum, just in here. And here's our friend foramen magnum here. So we're just looking at an upturned skull. Now, the first and obvious thing I want you to notice is that you can't see foramen rotundum from this view. Sure, you can see foramen ovale sitting right here. Sure, you can see foramen lacerum right here. But foramen ovale is not visible from this surface. There are a couple of features though that are visible here and I want to remind you of. Remember we said that the autonomic component comes out through foramen lacerum here. That is that little piece of the seventh nerve. And that little piece of the seventh nerve comes out through there and immediately runs into a little tiny foramen that you can just see hiding underneath here, just here. Can you see there, there's a little foramen just there? And that foramen is the opening of the pterygoid canal. I'll write it out. Pterygoid canal. And that little tiny canal there, the pterygoid canal, will run through the bone under here to join up with the opening of foramen rotundum. So let's just finish off that little piece of parasympathetic nerve that runs through there. There it is, running deep into there. And just to complete the story, we have over here, and I've sort of drawn over it, which was a bit of a mistake, but we'll get over that. Here we have our old friend, the carotid canal. That is where the internal carotid artery is going to run into the brain, up through there, carotid artery. And at that point, a little piece of the sympathetic fibres jump off the carotid artery, run across the base of the skull to join their parasympathetic partners and run down the pterygoid canal to join up with the maxillary division of the trigeminal nerve. So this is the sympathetic in yellow. So we now have two components running through the pterygoid canal the parasympathetic in green coming from the seventh cranial nerve and the sympathetic fibers coming from those that used to those that wrap around the internal carotid artery that little piece that little transition across there of those sympathetic fibers that nerve actually gets a name and it is called the deep petrosal nerve and that deep petrosal nerve just there is uh, the little piece of sympathetic as it runs across to the pterygoid canal. So let's now move on and talk about where this foramen rotundum is.